Yeah, I told y'all I was going to do this. All's fair in love and nerddom. What's going on, watchers? We'll hear with a video for you. Wait, this isn't hybrid. I can do what I want. Anyways, this has been a long time coming, my video about the costumes I don't like for the upcoming Avengers Infinity War. Or, by the time you watch this, it may actually be out. So, essentially, let's waste no time, because thanks to Entertainment Weekly, we get a good look at basically all of the costumes, if not at least most of them. Except Ant-Man and Hawkeye, but whatever, we'll make it work. So let's get to this. God, help me, this cast is huge. Iron Man. Not a fan. Uh, the boosters have a practical purpose, but aesthetically, along with the rest of the suit, there doesn't seem to be a good balance of the red and gold, and the nanite kind of underwire seems to be an aesthetic choice, but in the little motion I've seen of it all, it just kind of looks funky. Captain America. Cap almost never lets me down with the suits. I love the vibranium shields, I like the tattered and worn suit design, the beard. I dig it. I do kind of wish the red and white parts were probably like red and black, but it's fine. It helps make the colors pop a little bit more. Thor. This is an interesting choice that they went with, but I like that they brought back the metal nipples. I actually really like Thor with short hair, but I have no issues with him having his golden locks either. It's a cool twist, but hopefully he does go back to his more flashier suits in the future. Hulk. Looks great. Nearly impossible to fuck up anyways, so yeah, keep it up. Black Widow. Oh, now this one looks bad. This seems kind of a step back, because her Civil War suit looked great. The batons are fine, I guess, but the dyed eyebrows are killing me. I think they took inspiration from one of the other widows to make her blonde, but this whole ensemble doesn't do it for me. Doctor Strange. Still looks pretty darn good. I think you could simplify his suit some in terms of the belt and all the loose objects, but you know, nice robe, nice cloak. I think we could have actually done more to make Strange, well, stranger, and make him stand out more, but for the most part, yeah, he's fine. Spider-Man. Oh god, this thing is ugly. Okay, I do not like the Iron Spider redesign. The concept is good, yes, even though I think it's a little early for him to get it, but hey, it's a war, he needs an upgrade anyway, so whatever. But, like, the colors have way too much happening. The spider symbol on the front and the back looks just gaudy. The plating really does make it a literal iron spider. I just I just hope going forward they use the suit from the new Disney promo art that they have. Not this. I do not like this suit. Black Panther. The suit, yes. The helmet, no. The changes made to the helmet between Civil War and his solo film stripped it of how intimidating it really comes across. The suit itself is fine mostly, and I can see why they changed it all together to make it more so resemble the suit from the comics in the 60s, but with his ears going more up and being a lot more rounded and the front of the mask being more panther-like, it's just less striking and less intimidating than the one was from Civil War. Bucky Barnes, aka White Wolf. He looks fine. His little blue outfit is cute. Uh, I like the new vibranium arm. Loki. Fine. Shaggy pale white guy. Vision. Again, barely changed between films. Looks fine. Scarlet Witch. The red hair is a new touch. Her outfit seems mostly unchanged, maybe more leather. Uh, I just hope her accent has improved a little bit. <laughs> the Falcon. I think he had a few touches, but they look good regardless. His costume never really stood out to me. I think they could have maybe given it more red to homage the original, but it's, it's fine. War Machine. I'm liking it. I'm glad to see Rhodey will be participating in the fun. Only a few slight changes to his old suit, but it still overall looks nice. Shuri. You know, this was a wasted opportunity to use one of her abandoned concept designs that have some really, really cool variations, but I love Letitia Wright, so there's no real problems here. <laughs> Star Lord. About the same as before. All this time passed and he's been wearing mostly the same stuff. I don't know, that seems off to me, but whatever. Gamora. A step in the right direction. Uh, in terms of having them achieve an overall uniform. This is gonna sound weird, but I think she has too many clothes on. Well, articles of clothing. Her wrists have this weird kind of strap things on it. 
Her undershirt is popping out from a clearly too snug fitting pants. I mean, I know the Guardians are assholes, but you know, a little bit of presence? Drax. Like the Hulk? Hard to mess up. Looks fine. Groot? See previous character? Rocket Raccoon. Ugh, this little shit. Okay, why is his outfit blue? Everyone else is either red or barely clothed. Get with the program. God, I hate raccoons. Nebula. Looks freaking dope. She got the red outfit, not too much silly dishevelment. A model example of what the team uniform should and could actually look like. Mantis. Someone give her a uniform. But Mantis can sort of slide due to her comic roots and because she makes it look adorable all at the same time. But not even like a splash or a red accent. Thanos. He looks good, but man, I wish he wore his armor. I know he technically doesn't need it because of the gauntlet, but to see this big purple fucker step to you in gold armor would just be terrifying and badass all at the same time. And no, his weird purple shading just really doesn't bother me. The Black Order. Yeah, all four of these guys look awesome. The right mix of straight from the comic and a little menacing. I hope they do some damage. Anyways, let me know what you think about the costumes down in the comment section below. Stop, stop, stop. Uh... Initially, I wasn't going to do this, but I changed my mind because this video was originally supposed to go up while I was seeing the movie, and clearly that didn't happen, but I've seen it, and I'm home now, and I just kind of wanted to give some non-spoiler thoughts on it. I'm supposed to be doing a show on it, a podcast, maybe a live show. Who knows? Let's see how that goes uh, with Hybrid Network. So yeah, just to kind of talk about the movie, and... I guess Marvel in general for a little bit, just for a minute or two. This is a very intriguing experience coming uh, 10 years. It's weird to think that when I saw this movie, I was like 12 and now I'm 22. <laughs> like it started with Iron Man and now we're here at Infinity War. And and I really like the movie. Um, I do have some gripes, but the majority of them aren't plot related. Uh, it's more with certain directions that they took with the writing and it was actually something we talked about in the last Marvel Elite, and I'm going to expand upon that more once we actually do our show. But I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, I thought the acting was really good. The effects were a lot better this time. It looked like they heard some of the, the criticisms that have been made for the films in terms of uh, effects and music. There are some that are still a little bit wonky here and there, but I still overall enjoyed it. I'm, again, I'm not going to spoil anything. But just in terms of an emotional experience, it really does come down to investment. And if you've really been on this train of Marvel and been excited and seen like all the movies in theaters, I've seen most of them in theaters. I think the only ones I didn't see in theaters, I know for sure the first Captain America and the first Thor, I did not see in theaters. In fact, I saw them after Avengers. I went back and watched them at home. Um, and I, I really loved Captain America. I enjoyed Thor for what it was. I think I may have seen Thor 2 in theaters. I don't recall. But if you're like on this hype train, you've been riding it for 10 years and you really enjoy these movies, then you're going to love this. Uh, the MCU like can have low moments, but I've never seen it really outright fail. But if you're not really into it or you're not a fan... I, I don't know why you would continue with the series other than just to say you did it. Like, they're, they're expensive-ass movies, and there's a lot of effort that I can see that goes into it in terms of not just, like, all the background stuff, like the effects, uh, the costume design, the music, to an extent. Um, but really, the, the acting, which is something that resonates with me a little bit more on a personal level. And you can see when people are really feeling something here and it does kind of resonate with you as an audience member from a kind of empathetic point of view like wow this is it really feels like this feels like a 10-year culmination and it does in a way a lot of it a lot of points feel like the people involved were passionate about this and there there seems to be uh this kind of this potential is like if you if you enjoy this is just basically what i'm saying if you enjoy the mcu you will enjoy this movie if you don't like it then don't see it because it's basically more of the same 
Um, it's not really going to try to turn around, but uh, there were some surprises. There were actually quite a few. There were some decisions I thought they were going to make that they didn't, and there were some that I thought they didn't, and they did. Uh, some some decisions I think were bold. I All I'll say is that I wish I didn't know what the slate was for the movies, and I'll leave it at that. Um, but, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I... I highly recommend it if you like these characters, if you're invested in these characters. I, I'm going to talk about this a lot more in detail over on HN when I do my podcast for the week, um, which should be very interesting because I think we have Deadpool and Venom and then this, which is really, really big. So I'm very interested not just to hear about how everyone else thinks it turns out, but also to like have more time to detail my thoughts and feelings about the movie because I, I overall really, really enjoyed it. I um. It's a different type of investment, which is what I knew from the jump. Um, the investment in terms of being a blurred, I guess a black nerd, between Black Panther and this are very different sensations. Um, and I could talk about Black Panther maybe in another video if someone wants me to, why that uh, felt the way it did, for why it resonated with a lot of people the way it did. But this one just hits on a different level because it's just a time thing. It's it's like it's almost like a in terms of like investment, not not effort on our part because we're just the consumers, but in terms of investment with uh, in passion, it's kind of like a doctoral dissertation. You spend years and years and years getting to know and learn about this like universe and these concepts and all these characters, and you get so engrossed into it and you start to want to know more and more about the worlds that they come from. And, you know, this is one of the things that helped kind of reignite me going into comic culture and kind of going away from uh, anime and manga culture and everything. And once you get, like, so deep into it, you once you see it hit, like, a peak, kind of like this will be and hopefully what Avengers 4 will be, it, it, it just feels earned in a sense. And it feels good, and I, I can tell that the people behind this are proud of what they made and they have a right to be um so i enjoyed it and yeah so now i'm gonna like cut back to that like comment subscribe part and i'll see you next time this wasn't nearly as painful or taxing as the dc one was so there by the time this goes up i will hopefully be going to see the movies so yeah like comment subscribe i post videos randomly so keep an eye out and i'll see you next time have a good one Thank you.